Seismic waves are basically movements of the lithosphere in wave patterns. Energy from a large disruptance event is carried from molecule to molecule of the crust. And it's, I know it's hard to imagine this, but when you think of like an ocean wave, you actually see the water moving up and down, side to side, and like that, we actually learn the water is actually moving in circles. But imagine the ground moving in a similar way. The ground itself moving up and down, side to side, uh, as conformations and all the sources of waves. These is actually what we think of seismic waves. Basically, the same way the sound waves move through the air from particle to particle, the same way ocean waves move from particle to particle in the water, energy is carried from molecule to molecule with the ground itself moving in wave patterns, and that's what a seismic wave actually is. And so we're going to learn about that in this video. But before that, let's talk about what causes seismic waves. Now, seismic waves are caused by earthquakes. A lot of people recognize seismic waves as earthquakes, and those are, again are caused by elastic rebound, or when the rock is pushed beyond the point that can take, and along the fault line, which is locked, and not allowing the rock to move, and therefore it has to bend, it has to be under stress, will then therefore will go undergo the strain, which is bending, until finally can't take it anymore. When it usually will crack, slip, when in an event is called a rupture which is followed subsequently by an elastic rebound where the rock is allowed to return to its original shape, setting off a shock wave and movement of the rock itself, which misaligns the rock with its original position and also sends a shock wave, which we call the seismic wave. But earthquakes are not the only thing that can cause a seismic wave. Seismic waves can also be caused by volcanic activities. Uh, seismic waves can also be caused by massive collision events. Every time a meteor has hit the Earth, massive seismic waves were released. You also have explosions such as nuclear explosions dynamite explosions or all kinds of explosions can also create the seismic waves and so seismic waves are disturbances of the, the floor now there's actually two kinds of seismic waves you have the body waves and then you have surface waves body waves are the waves that go through the body of the rock or inside the rock itself and surface waves are the waves that only affect the surface of the rock and cannot go deeper than the first few hundred meters and so these are only going to be affecting the surface and they quickly lose power as they go into the ground. Now body waves will actually travel through the rock and in both directions actually. This drawing is showing you the, rock, the, the body waves moving upwards from the actual focus which we call the hypocenter as well, remember that? However this is actually not always the, just the case. The rocks can, the same waves can also propagate into the ground and that's important for what we're going to talk about in the next video on how we can use the waves to determine the, in the structure of the center of the earth and so remember that, that the waves go in every direction including underground and we're talking about of course about body waves. Now there's actually two kinds of body waves, the first are called primary waves or pressure waves and we abbreviate them as P waves. Now P waves are pressure or primary wave, so easy to remember because it's PPP. Uh, it's called primary because it's the fastest moving wave and that's forward is the first one to arrive after the earthquake. You will feel it and it's basically compression stress. It's stress that happens because the molecules are being squeezed and stretched over and over again as they hit each other side by side in a domino effect kind of thing. And that's the first one to arrive and it's interesting because the P waves can go through anything. Solids, wicked, liquid, air, anything. Which means when these waves hit the atmosphere, it would actually cause the atmosphere itself to shake which makes a sound as you recognize the earthquake sound. And it will also go through liquids, which will cause the water to shake while doing an earthquake as well and all that kind of stuff. Then you also have the shear waves or S waves or secondary waves, SSS, easy to remember. Secondary waves because they're second to arrive during an earthquake, they're slightly slower than the P wave. It's, it, it takes longer to actually make the wave bend the way the shear stress is and basically shear stress is going to make the ground move in an ass shape instead of the primary waves which makes the, the ground move back and forth like this and so the ass waves instead of the primary waves will move the ground in an ass or cobra shape kind of thing and that's how the rock will actually move which is causing by shear stress which of course is what causes the ass conformation and it's interesting because it can only go through solids yet another ass so it's easy to remember S only goes through solids, only solids with the S. Get that? Right. So, on the other hand, the P wave, get it? P wave can be liquid, can go through the liquid. All right? P waves can be solid or liquid or even air. S waves, solid only. Okay? And they're slower, second to arrive, caused by shear stress, while P waves are caused by compression stress. Now, when these waves hit the surface, 
they will be transformed into what we call the surface waves. And this is the way that the, the surface moves. Now, if you're sitting on top of a P wave, and you will basically feel the ground moving up and down like this. And an S wave will make, make the ground move from side to side. The combination of the S and P waves as they hit the surface creates a pattern uh, that spreads from the epicenter of the earthquake and moves the ground that way. Now, remember, the epicenter is the location directly above the, the focus or hypocenter along the fault line, which is what, where the earthquake usually takes place because of those locked faults, right? Now, stretching from the epicenter, you're going to have the surface waves. And these surface waves are in two types. You have the rally waves and the love waves. Now, rally waves are easy to think of. They're kind of like up and down waves, the way you would think of an ocean wave. So imagine the ground moving up and down and up and down. That's the rally wave. And then you have the love waves. Love waves are basically making the ground shake from side to side like this. And kind of like a chaotic way where you both roll and move side to side at the same place, time. So the best way to think of this is to actually do the famous, the infamous um, earthquake dance. So now that you know all the, all the waves, let's do the earthquake dance so you can remember them. Now some of you might find this disturbing, but it actually helps you remember. So let's do this. First of all, quickly and so, remember that the earthquakes are going to be happening because of the different kinds of boundaries, right? You're going to have transform boundaries, convergent boundaries, and divergent boundaries. So everybody do the diverge. Do the diverge. Right? It's the divergent boundary. Did anybody do the converge? Do the converge. All right, so you got some two dance moves going on, and then do the transform. Do the transform. All right, do the transform. Okay, good. So you got those three guys down, and we did this with the plate tectonics already, so you can put them together. So you can do converge, diverge, transform. Converge, diverge, transform. All right, so that's kind of like the things. So as you can see, I have zero dance moves, but it helps me remember. Now, when it comes to the earthquake dances, and this is where it gets tricky here tricky, right? Let's start with the surface waves, okay? So because they're easier to do. The rally wave would basically be going like a like an ocean wave, right? So basically what you gotta do here is you gotta you gotta go up and down, right? So that's the rally wave. It's the rally wave, right? Do the rally wave. So it's easy to remember. And then you have the love wave. The love wave is kind of crazy and foldy and shaky side to side and turn at the same time. So you got the love wave. I like this one. It's kind of like a cool dance move. Alright? And then you also have, of course, the S wave. Oh, this is the awesome one, right? So shake your booty. It's the S wave. The S wave, right? And the S wave is basically making an S. So we try to be the, as slithery as possible. S wave. And then, of course, of course, everybody's favorite, the P wave. The P wave, right? Up and down, P wave. All right. So you put it all together, you make the P wave, the S wave. Love waves, love waves, and the rally waves, and the rally waves. All right, that's the earthquake dance and the plate boundary blast, and I hope you remember it, and it helps you figure out all the different kinds of waves there are. In the next video, I'm going to be explaining the difference between P waves and S waves, and why P waves can go through solids and liquids and air, but S waves can only go through solids. See you guys then.